Hello and welcome to Reema's Garden. I am Reema Gopalan. This is part 1 in our series What's in your pot. Today we are going to talk about perlite. So, what is perlite? See, obsidian is a naturally occurring volcanic glass and perlite is formed by processing and heating obsidian, okay? Obsidian when uh, uh, processed and heated expands a lot and uh, also because of the water inside the rock you know it expands greatly and it is very light in weight so it is an industrial mineral and a commercial product useful uh, for its low density after processing now let's just quickly look at the advantages of perlite okay so the biggest advantage of perlite is that it's very 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 light in weight um, uh, if you have seen perlite, it's it's very light in weight like a popcorn, you know. So it helps a lot with the aeration inside the pots. That is the biggest advantage of perlite and that is the main reason why people use perlite inside the pots for aeration. That is air circulation inside the containers, inside the soil. Also, it helps with better drainage. And another advantage is the fact that it is pH neutral, which means it will not change the pH level of your soil, irrespective of the quantity that you are using. Okay, now let's just quickly look into the disadvantages of perlite. Before we dive into this, I want to tell you that it is not really a disadvantage of a perlite, but more so because of the misconceptions that we have about perlite. Uh, the misinformation that has caused us using this perlite in the wrong way, which in turn leads to the disadvantage. Let's quickly look into it. Okay, so now the biggest disadvantage of perlite is the misinformation or the myth that it helps in water retention. You know, perlite is very poor when it comes to water retention. So the biggest disadvantage is uh, misapplication because of misinformation. People use it uh, thinking that it will help with water retention. No, it doesn't. And perlite needs to be always and always used in combination with the materials that retain water, like whether it is vermiculite or cocoa peat, etc. Okay. So, uh, we saw in the advantages that the fact that it is pH neutral, which also means there is a disadvantage that it has no nutritional, minimum or almost equivalent to no nutritional value. Okay. Also, uh, obsidian is a non-renewable resource and we need to use it wisely. I mean, it's not like we do not have any other alternative to perlite. So, uh, we need to use it only and only if necessary. Okay, and the biggest disadvantage is the fact that the granules, you know, they, they break uh, and they form a powder. And once it is in the powder form, it is of no use. Perlite is useful only as long as it is in the granular form, okay? And the breakage is inevitable uh, and that's one of the disadvantages. Now, let's come to the cost-benefit analysis. Is it worth the time, money and the effort that you have put in to procure a packet of perlite? So now, coming to the cost-benefit analysis, See, perlite is very cheap and needs to be used in a very little quantity. So that's good. Cost wise, it is very cheap. So you can definitely go for it if you want to. However, um, it is a non-renewable resource. And if you can substitute it with other soil amendments, like which are uh, available for almost free of cost, like whether it is sand or small stones and pebbles, um, I'm like, why not? Isn't it? And in my experience, in the past four or five years, I have never used perlite, and I don't think there is uh, a real need for using a perlite as such. Also, as mentioned earlier, you know, the biggest disadvantage is the fact that it is misinformed and there is a misapplication. People use perlite um, thinking it will help with water retention, and it doesn't. So, uh, if you are looking for a soil medium to enhance water retention, I wouldn't say. Um, I would say perlite is not the material that you did go for. Thank you.